Hi, this is Edwin Braun of Siebes Visual Technology. I'm going to show you in this video a technology preview of FireRender for GPU. Please keep in mind that this is a product under development, so features might show up in the final product or not. In this video we are going to talk about IES lights. FireRender does support IES lights. FireRender has its own IES lights, the FireRender IES lights. There's another video you might want to check out as well about the FireRender specific IES lights. However, FireRender is known to be the most flexible renderer on the market. We do also support the standard IES lights. In 3D Studio Max they are called photometric lights. FireRender for GPU supports photometric lights and the great thing about it is that you don't have to change your scenes at all. You can just load an existing scene and use all the lights you have there already placed, already set up. Fire render for GPU will just use the photometric lights and render them as you would expect it from any professional rendering system. So let me bring up now um, our illumination options we have in Fire Render for GPU. First, I would like to start. Uh, the interactive GPU renderer by using Active Shade. And right now I'm going to use the Active Shade window. Let me just move the render settings to the side. So what you can see here is right now our illumination as we see it here. We have the um, IES lights. These are standard IES lights. You can see that here we have the photometric light web and all the settings. So that's a plain vanilla 3 Studio Max IES light. However, um, before we go a little bit deeper into the IES lights, um, let me just turn them down to zero. And now we get a, a black screen. And as you can see, we still have the one-to-one -one real time connection with our uh, Fire Render for GPU. So I'm going to activate another light source. Let me just bring in the material editor for that. You might know we have a fire render light material and that allows you to turn any object into a light. So let me just bring up the intensity of this light source here. And as you can see, we have this little rim around the corners and that's turned into a self-illuminated or into a light material. So we can uh, illuminate the whole scene um, with these kind of objects. And let me just bring back the light to zero as well. And you can see we get real nice real-time feedback. So it's very easy and fast to set up your scene. I've turned on this area light here. Same deal. It's just a self-illuminated active FR light material that turns um, this f uh, surface into an, a real area light. And you can see how fast and, and great it is. And we can navigate here in real time in our scene. We can move in and out. So we get real time feedback on our illumination here. And again, let me just turn on the other light as well. Now I have activated these lights as well. And now we get already a nice uh, color and, and light bleeding here. Let me just reduce the main light a little bit and maybe even a little bit more something like this and you see now our light is no longer that strong but we still get a nice indirect illumination here and now let, let's bring back our IAS lights. I've turned on the IAS lights and you can see uh, they're here and for now, I would say let's concentrate on the IES lights. So I'll bring back our rim light here. So as you can see, we do support IES lights and the support is in real time. So I can just change the photometric web. Let me just load. Uh, I, I've downloaded some uh, IES lights from the Aircrow library and we can just choose whatever light we want. And the great thing here is because it's a standard IES light, you get all the standard max dialogs. So you can see where the light distribution is, the light web. And as you can see, instantly it changes the light situation here. So 
that's how how it works we do support all the features of the standard photometric lights in 3d studio max and we can let me just uh, choose another light something like this for example and you can see we have instant update here in the viewport and as well we are able to move objects or lights around as you can see we get real-time feedback when I move around this light and the same is true for rotating rotation of the light I'm doing the rotation here so all the stuff can be done in real time and because we have a fully implemented real-time renderer with Fine Render for GPU you can start modeling in a GI scene and assign materials. Let me just assign a uh, material to the scene, uh, to the object, and we are going to assign just a standard architecture material. I'll assign it to the box. We have reflection already turned on. Let me uh, turn off the reflection. Let me adjust a little bit the color of our object. Uh, something like that and as you can see this is a real GI uh, situation light bouncing around um, you can see the, the color bleeding in the corner when I get close to, to the light source you see the color bleeding here and that's the great thing about firing for GPU you have real-time uh, control and you can just go go ahead and, and model your way and everything will just work as you expect it and it's really pretty stable, stable right now even that we are still under development and in beta uh, you can just go ahead and, and model and, and modify materials so I can bring back the uh, the reflection or I can choose from let me just choose from a material library here we just choose let's say um, where's our chrome material and you see instantly our box changes to chrome or we just say okay I want physical glass our box instantly changes to glass right now there's a lot of black in there we can have a glossy finish all this this uh, stuff can happen in real time in here so I hope you enjoyed it keep in mind this video was about the uh, IES lights, we do support the standard photometric lights, which is a really great feature we have in Fire Render for GPU.